Okay, this is the Gooch back with another video review for you. This time it's a review that I've actually been waiting to do for here for a little bit. I wanted to get a little more time in on the unit before I did the review. Um, I bought it just after Christmas actually because they I found one on, well I guess not really typically a sale, but I got it actually refurbished. Um, and I'm happy I did it because I saved quite a bit of money on it. And uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and get right into it and I'll describe everything I got. Okay, so here we are. If you haven't guessed already, it is a nice, fancy Apple time capsule. Um, obviously very similar to the Airport Extreme. However, this does have a two terabyte hard drive built into it uh, for uh, shared storage. Uh, it does, um, that's really the only difference between the two units, uh, between the Airport Extreme and the time capsule is the hard drive. Other than that, all the other features that we're gonna go through are, sim are basically the same. So, take it with what you will. Typically, this is a $299 unit. This is the newest model, the MD032LL-A, or slash A, I apologize. Uh, that is what the current model is. Uh, and uh, so here we go. I got it for $229, I believe, uh, from Best Buy, actually, that was selling some refurb units. So I was more than happy to do it. And... Uh, Here's the back of the unit. Uh, this obviously is all the major things that you're going to need to know. So we have the power cord, which is what also came with it. This is nice standard Apple white power cord. Uh, it does have a USB device. This can be used one of two ways. You can either plug a printer. If you don't have a, uh, a, a networked printer, this will make your printer a networked printer. Uh, that's actually currently what I have because I haven't, I don't really use a printer too much and I still have an older printer. So that's what I typically use. I'll show you how that sets up. And then we have the the WAN port or the WAN port, port and then three uh, switch ports. So this obviously is a router. So you have your incoming connection, your internet coming in here. And then you have your wireless, which connects to any of your wireless devices. And then three hard connections which currently I have a lot more than three wire, wire connections. So I have um, my one of my computers that runs off this, and then I have the, another one going to my uh, gigabit switch. This is a gigabit switched router, so these are gigabit com connections. So you can uh, you can get full connection speed out of your uh, all of your devices through the time capsule. Uh, the time capsule is obviously as well a wireless and router so or a uh, wireless access point you do have your Kensington lock point here as well so uh, and then you also have your little reset button the recess guy you have to kind of hit with a toothpick or a paper clip the bottom is all just rubber so it doesn't really move around too much and then you have your serial numbers and your uh, information down here your IDs and stuff on the top you just have your standard Apple symbol and then on the front you have your indicator light. Now the indicator light will either glow green for good connection it's connected to the internet. If you disconnect from the internet uh, it either goes yellow or red. We're going to find that out to be honest. I can't really remember. Um, and uh, oh geez now my camera's all acting up on me. I apologize for that. Um, and so with that said there's not a whole lot I can say other than what I've already said. Refurbished unit doesn't come in the nice Apple box. It just comes in this standard white box. And uh, it was wrapped in the bubble wrap alongside with its power cord. And uh, came as that, like that, um, in another box, obviously, from Best Buy. And uh, we'll go ahead and hook this up, show you how I hooked it up, uh, and then uh, we'll run down the process on the computer. So I've already hooked the unit back up. As you can see here on my setup, like I said, I have my power cord. I have my USB drive. This is actually going to my printer up here. I have my um, internet coming in, which is coming from my cable modem into the WAN port. And then the last two connections, one for my computer and then one going to a gigabit switch going to all the rest of my devices. So I actually keep one port open on the router itself. Doesn't really matter how you set it up, but that's how I have it set up. Okay, 
So we have the time capsule plugged in, everything's running now. We have the green status light saying that everything's connected, everything's hunky dory. Now you can actually change some of these settings in within the uh, airport utility that I'm going to show you next. Um, but uh, what happens is, is that we can actually change to tell us or what what can actually change the status light from the green hunky dory, yay, everything is okay light to the blinking orange, hey, something's up light. I have it set so it actually alerts me to when the Ethernet cable is unplugged or the cable modem or, you know, when uh, something's happening where that we don't have internet. So if I was to take my cable modem right now and unplug the power from it, all of a sudden it's telling me, hey, something's up here. I don't, uh, my, my Ethernet cable came unplugged. So whether or not there's a break in the cable or the, obviously I turned off my cable modem, it's telling me right now, hey, something's up here. You can actually have it uh, set so it actually ignores that and, you know, certain things that you don't want. Hey, I don't want this thing blinking at me if something else happens all the time because I, this happens all the time or whatever, and I know what to check. That's why you can actually ch change that and tell it to ignore it, and I'll show you that in the settings how to do that. Okay, so here we are on the desktop. From here, what we're going to do in order to modify or edit or change any settings within the time capsule or the airport extreme for that matter, what you're going to need is the Apple Airport Utility. Now if you go to your browser and you can just go to Google or search anything and just search Apple Airport Utility, you can actually add on your operating system after that. Um, I'm going to use the one for Windows so I could just type Windows after that. Obviously it's right here as well. Apple Airport Utility 5.5.3 for Windows. It's under the support Apple page. That's where you're going to want to download it from Apple directly to make sure you, you have it. Um, go ahead and just click the download button and from there you'll just go ahead and you'll get the download down here. Um, I already have it installed so I'm just going to let that go. Um, and then if you want to find it, the easiest way here in Windows is just go down here. Just start typing airport here it is Apple Airport Utility boom comes up automatically found my uh, my Schuster airport time capsule here here's all the uh, information that you're gonna need basically on this and from this box is where we're gonna set up everything. okay so here we are we're just in the airport utility now to get rid of all the desktop clutter for you um, basically what we're gonna do is if you're setting up this for the first time uh, you can just hit the continue button down here and this is gonna change you're gonna go through the basically step-by-step -step procedure telling all the information on the device obviously you would want to change these settings and then you can add, you can edit the name or password I'm not gonna uh, do any changes because I already have mine set up. Um, you can uh, check how you want to share the device disks inside. Right now I have a, uh, a USB printer hooked up. Um, it's showing right here within this. If you want to change this, you can do it here. The better place to change these kind of things is in the manual settings. But from here you can actually go through step by step, get it set up. Obviously here's your passwords for your, your wireless settings and everything like that. Um, if you want to have a guest network, I'm actually going to turn mine off because I don't use it anyway. And then uh, just obviously they're basic things. And then at the end you hit update. What's going to happen is it's going to it's basically going to kind of restart the device to make sure everything updates properly. If you click update, obviously here's how it updates. It's writing to the Apple device telling it, hey, here's the settings that I want to change. And then now my device is actually currently in restart mode. The light is orange, so I do not have internet to my devices currently. But I'm still connected to the network actually because um, I've actually used I'm actually transferring files and I've done this before and it actually didn't interrupt the transfer of files on the network, which is something that I thought would definitely happen. Um, so I'm fine with that. I'm not saying that I'm guaranteeing that that would happen to you as well, but it did happen to me. So with that said, so now it's uh, the device is in restart. As soon as it comes back online, it's going to pop right back into the airport utility and telling me that it's back um, online. And so now I'm going to go ahead and get into the manual setup setting. Okay, so I expanded the window there a little bit. Um, when you come into the settings here, you're going to come into a summary page, which is going to tell you the basics about your entire network. Um, from here, we can actually, uh, we have five main settings that we can uh, go set through and then within each setting you're gonna have multiple tabs within each um, obviously the summary you have information about your time capsule which you can s change your uh, time capsule information itself set your time within there and then uh, change your time zone which I uh, will have to change later wireless settings we've already gone through um, 
name wireless you know uh, network and stuff like that um, guest network if you want to have a guest network and the uh, security behind that access control um, basically you can uh, choose which computer I believe to control the actual device and uh, stuff like that so not too familiar with the access control part but it's there internet if we get the internet button this will tell you where information on the internet connection uh, you can tell it what to do with all of these um, you can tell the, the speed settings and things like that and uh, whether or not you want to share the IP address um, or range TCP IP tells you all the information about that DHCP will tell you about the the IP ad set uh, IP uh, s um, addresses that you're going to actually um, assign to all the computers that actually connect to your um, device. You can actually res reserve uh, IP addresses based on, I believe, MAC address or a client ID, either way. And then uh, your uh, network address translation here as well. Printers. If you ha use the USB port for a printer, you can go ahead and do that here. Um, from that, you can actually, obviously, right now I have my HP desk my desk jet plugged in. All you do is, um, as soon as you plug in the printer, it's going to come up here, and then you have to you just go ahead and set that up within this device here, and then uh, I'll show you how to actually uh, set it up within Windows and Mac if I can do that as well. Macs are actually really easy, so but with Windows, I'll definitely show you that. Uh, you can also share your printer over. The, the network it's or the uh, your WAN port as well um, I don't do that I just keep it on my LAN disks if you had a, another disk connected it would show up here but at the same time your time capsule disk is going to show up here as well I have the two terabyte version which obviously after formatting I'm at down to 1.8 terabytes um, it kind of verifies the status of the disk you can erase it from here you can you can do a whole bunch of things from here disconnect anybody that's actually currently using it if in case somebody's using it that you want don't want to use it share files you can uh, enable to share file sharing from that disk with the other computers around the network as well and you can actually have it set up so you have uh, passwords and everything like that um, right here so I have it just with my device password. You can even have it with accounts, and then you can also even ha uh, enable um, guest access right here. Not allowed at all, so they can't even access the drive, or I just have it read and write. So anyway, that's on my network and just read and write from the disk. They don't have to be logged in with my account. Advanced settings. Uh, advanced settings. Logging statistics. This is going to tell you everything more. I mean, a lot more stuff about you. If you hit the logs and statistics button from here. You're going to see everything that was kind of done from the device. Um, wireless clients, this will tell you how many wireless clients are currently attached to your device and their MAC address as well as their settings. As well as DHCP clients, clients are actually connected via the hard connection. Um, and uh, their IP addresses and their MAC addresses and everything, obviously, you can see it for yourself. These are actually... The DHCP clients are connect clients are actually connected to the router and connect and accessing the internet and um, either the the hard connection or the wireless connection. So, um, and that's the three basic settings within the logs setting. If we go back to the advanced, you can also map your ports. Um, you can uh, choose where, you know, UDB ports. If you want to actually have a specific port routed to a specific computer, you can do that here. Uh, obviously, what you're going to want to do more than anything else is make sure that that computer has uh, a static IP address within your system. So you make sure you, ha you have reserved that IP address for that computer. That way, if the power goes out and the um, router resets and your computer gets a different IP address, these ports are still routing to that, you know, Obviously, you want everything going back to the same thing. MobileMe, if you have MobileMe, here's where you do that at. I don't have MobileMe, so I don't have to worry about that. And then uh, the IPv6. So that is the simple run-through of uh, the airport utility. Uh, you can download this yourself, and uh, if you have anything, you can obviously uh, change any of the settings within the utility here. Um, 
there's obviously a lot of things you can do and things that I'm not even completely aware of to do. I'm sure that I'll figure it out eventually. I've only been using it for a little less than a, or about a month, I guess, now. And uh, so far, I really, really love it. So that's the airport utility. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And uh, I was going to show you how to connect to a, uh, a, if you have a printer connected to the airport uh, or the time capsule. In Windows, first you're going to have to make sure you have Bonjour downloaded and installed. If you do, if you actually just go to the start bar and just start typing Bonjour, B-O-N-J, Bonjour Printer Wizard. If you click on that, what's going to come up is a list of devices that are connected or that you connect to using Bonjour on your network. Obviously, there it is right there. It found my printer instantaneously, and you click Next and Finish. I've already set it up, so I'm not going to do it again. However, if you don't have Bonjour, like my wife's computer, my, her laptop didn't, all you got to do is just type in Bonjour um, uh, in wherever you're going to click it. Uh, support.apple Bonjour print services for Windows and then you can go ahead and download it and then you can actually link this to actually update I believe every time within your uh, Apple update utility within your computer as well. Obviously you have a Mac you have you have Bonjour already on your device so you don't have to worry about that. Within Mac if you just go to settings printers you can just hit the plus sign and it's going to show up and it's simple. With Windows it's obviously a little more because you got to know about Bonjour. If you actually just go to your devices and printers and, oh, you know, I'm going to add a printer and, oh, that's going to be a network uh, printer. Um, boy, if my printer wizard actually comes up, you're not going to find it. Uh, see, so add local or add, you know, add a network printer. It's not going to find anything, which is what I first did. And then I was like, hmm. So then I figured it out and there we go. So I'm not going to let that sit there and spin. Um, so that's that's how you go ahead and set it up on your device, and that's how it works for the utility. So there you have it, folks. I hope that the audio and video quality of the desk uh, top camera worked. Um, kind of playing around with settings to make the user experience of my videos even a little better. Because uh, uh, why I don't have a whole bunch of time to mess around with it, I definitely want to make them better every time I possibly can. Um, with that said, I hope you enjoyed the review of my time capsule. Uh, I'll be completely honest, I am having more and more good feelings about my Apple products lately. Um, from my MacBook to my iPhone to my Apple keyboard and trackpad. Um, while those two devices are more specialty and they're not things I use all the time anyway, um, I still feel more comfortable with my RAT 7 mouse on my desktop, obviously. Um, but for couch potatoes, that's, those were product products were perfect. The time capsule is a fantastic product. It really is. I have yet to have a problem with it. Um, I've had uh, three years ago. I had the top of the line Linksys router, which failed me more times than I could even tell you. Uh, then I went to a high end Netgear router, which. <sighs> I really wish did a lot better, but um, you know those two devices actually had kick-ass awards from both Maximum PC and other places around the around the internet, and I couldn't tell you great things about them. I had really good connection speeds, but then they would just fail on me, and I'd have to restart them like a computer. I mean, regularly, every couple weeks, I'd have to restart the damn thing. I've had this time capsule now for a month, and I have yet to have to restart it. And uh, specifically with my Netgear in the past. Uh, it would not sync to my cable modem worth anything in the world. If I lost power and my cable modem and my router came up at the same time, it wouldn't connect. My cable modem would say, no, I don't have a computer connected to me, so I'd have to actually manually connect my laptop to my Netgear router to get the MAC address to register the cable modem with my provider. And then I could plug the Netgear router into the cable modem to get it to sync. Which was a pain in the butt. And I had to do that with my Linksys a few, every so often, every month, I'd say. But uh, with the Apple Time Machine, or I'm sorry, Time Capsule, flawless. I have not had to do that once. Even when I first bought the unit, it worked right out of the box. And uh, I have nothing but great things to say about it. And 
I'm not an Apple fanboy. I really am not. But, you know, I can understand why a lot of people stay in the culture because it, their products just work. Um, now, that's not saying that I'm going to turn anti-PC or anything because I love my PC as well. I'm just a fan of technology, I guess. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the review. I give the Apple Time Capsule two thumbs up. Uh, you know, I don't give that all the time or anything. I'm usually pretty happy with most of my gadgets that I choose to buy, especially ones that I buy. But this, even if I paid a lot more money than I did, I would be highly, it, it's highly worth it. It's, it's a very stable product and easy to access the disc, easy to control all of the settings. Uh, one thing I've hated in the past is all those, what, those interfaces, those, uh, those online, those browser interfaces for all those routers. They're pretty complicated. I'm really good with what I do, but I couldn't ask my wife to do anything on it because she couldn't figure it out. And most of the most of the settings on the Apple Airport are pretty straightforward. So, with that said, I highly recommend it, and uh, I hope. And I'm assuming that I'm going to get some comments, probably both negative and positive, from the review. Please post those below, and I will hopefully see them and hopefully get back to you. Uh, I also have the subscribe button up there on top. Please go ahead and click that if you like what you see, and uh, be sure to check out my other videos. Check out my channel. I have lots of videos, and I keep kind of uploading. I'm a very lax guy. It's not that I do these for money. I do these for fun. Uh, so with that said, I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions for me directly, or if you have any recommendations for future reviews, you can go ahead and uh, message me directly. You can also add me as a friend if you want me to check out your videos and stuff like that. You can definitely send me stuff as well. I try to check out most of the things I get. So, with that said, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. This is the Gooch saying thanks.